Welcome to Ascension Integration with Sandra Walter. Hi, welcome to Ascension Integration. I'm Sandra Walter. Last week I talked about how fear was created, the why, when, and how backstory of fear and how it affected certain races and why we continue to use it on this planet. Now this week I'm going to talk about unconditional love. Before I get into that, I just wanted to welcome everyone to May 2012. <laughs> there is a lot going on in May. The thing that's happening this week is a release of the density of the egoic levels. Now the ego is not going away. We are transforming it into something that is supportive of our higher self and a higher frequency. But this week is um, going to be easy for some and not so easy for others. But if you're feeling a little turbulent, uh, that's what's occurring with the, the 555, the May 5th, 2012. And I've written extensively about that on my website. So I'm just going to refer you there so that I can get into the topic. So unconditional love. While fear had to be created in separation from source, prime creator, Love did not need the same amount of separation. Now, there's always separation when you create a universe. It's just a piece, like I described last week, a piece of the creator's consciousness is separated from itself and a void is created around that in order to experience separation from true oneness. So there's always going to be a little bit of degree of separation as you go through. But unconditional love works more in degrees or levels of intensity <laughs> and I can feel a few ears perking up on that word degrees so let's just start at the beginning just as with any creation source takes a piece of its consciousness and surrounds it with a void in which to explore that aspect of itself our universe is built on the aspect or vibration of unconditional love and lucky us, we get to experience that. Out of all the universes which exist, we get the one with unconditional love right now. Uh, and that's pretty special. It's the closest vibration that we have to experience to source consciousness itself. So that's, that's a plus right there. And I know a lot of you are like, well, how come, how come, how come? Uh, listen to last week's show if you want to know the how comes. It doesn't feel like unconditional love a lot of the time. But we get to play in this realm of source. And as any artist can attest, creations always contain some kind of duality where the opposite of the main intention also exists in varying amounts. But the source vibration of this universe is unconditional love, which means that everything about love gets to be explored and tested, expanded on, and interpreted until eventually the creation returns back to its original state and is reintegrated back into source consciousness. Now that big bang may be science's way of interpreting the moment when source separated a part of its consciousness from itself in order to create a universe. Although within that separation is the creation of universal masters of light, the primary creators who begin to bring the intention of source into form within a universe I see several Big Bang type moments actually occurring early on in the birth of a, a universe with relatively smaller bursts of creation ongoing after that. It seems that our limited perceptions may keep us from experiencing or sensing the larger workings of creations in our galaxy and nearby neighboring galaxies. But that's changing now at a very quick rate as we come out of that linear time continuum that everyone's been talking about. Now, it's exciting to think that we'll be conscious enough to experience the merging of the Milky Way galaxy and Andromeda eventually, which may be one of those smaller big bangs that we can't perceive right now without the assistance of technology. So there's a lot of these events going on, obviously, in the universe. It, it's not all about us and one big bang and that's it. I mean, we've got 19 other universes going on and th there's a lot happening simultaneously. And I feel that we're going to be able to, we're all going to be able to open our consciousness up to 
experiencing those little um, kind of ripples in the in the zero point field eventually. Okay, back to unconditional love. As this universe unfolded into that void that was created for its existence, beings or primary creators, masters of light, whatever you want to call them, were created and assigned the duty of exploring love through sound, light, and eventually form. Now the original vibration from source is the OM that so many meditators use, although from my perspective, I think that OM is an interpretation of a frequency that is difficult to interpret in our audible range, let alone with vowels and, and consonants. <laughs> uh, the OM might be a vibration connected to this galaxy's creation because I don't see it as a universal tool, as in beings in other galaxies on other ends of this universe chanting OM as the original tone of creation. I, I don't sense that at all. But that's just me. Uh, tap into it yourself and, and let me know what you find. Now, vast geometries of light and sound eventually manifested form. The primary creators worked with source light, filling that void, creating stars and systems, brilliant expressions of stars and galaxies and planets, and eventually the life which would explore existence in those systems. Now, dimensions interpreted levels of existence. Symbols and geometries establish parameters for the expression of source as unconditional love, the pure state of creation for creation's sake, a wholeness of consciousness investigating what it means to be a creator. I find that so beautiful, this, this whole existence, just so beautiful. In that oneness vibration, certain universal laws were established to ensure that this universe remained true to its intention to explore source as unconditional love, or rather the unconditional love, which is source. Now the grand question of who I am, what I am, let, let me know all of myself that has challenged every being existing because it's because we are the answer to that question. Source knows already that it's love, but challenges it, wants to know all of what self-love is about. It's that question of what if I forgot to love myself? What would happen? And everything that we see around us is an expression of that. And that's not just us on this planet or you and your country or what. It's the entire universe is exploring that in a multitude of ways. It's obviously every solar system, every galaxy is not experiencing what we are. What that is, there is no point to that whatsoever. And and the creator and the even the prime creators, the little sub creators in charge of this universe, um, don't create the same thing twice. There's absolutely no need for that. Absolutely, um, that that is stagnation. So it's it's constant change, constant exploration, and everything that we question, everything that we do, think, create, is simply source questioning creating in order to know more of itself source is the is the ultimate artist which is why creativity connects us to that source consciousness so easily but uh, that's another show i will get into creative consciousness uh soon as the universe continued to expand with life creations and dynamics of opposition in order to create drama, change, and scenarios which challenged love, the duality, began to create lower density. So the more you challenge something, the more you start exploring something, and as you, you begin to create dimensional levels so that it's more and more fragmented, so that every being, every creation can experience every possible level and scenario and incident and challenge within itself and that's what we are even though we're you know down at the bottom of the ladder 
all of our higher levels are experiencing all of these these different challenges and experiences and ways of creating it's all just creating creation 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 is really beautiful but duality began to create lower density just as an expression a way to explore substructures of source consciousness this is billions and billions of years of creation and experimentation in light sound form eventually some masters of light started to explore their own creating abilities without source light because the main intention was unconditional love and everything is going to be built out of that that's what this universe is is meant to explore and as some masters uh, as the artists that they were because they were all creators sub creators as the artists that they are this is you know this is this is what it's like to be a creator this is this is something that uh, that many artists get into eventually you're like mm, let's see what what this happened what's going to happen if i go this way and eventually some masters of light began creating without pure source light which is normal as a creation becomes more and more self-aware now it did lead to some distortions whether the archonic structures that i discussed last week which bled through from a parallel universe exploring something completely different whether archonic structures were present when these masters of light began creating without the source light is not known to me but as i'm talking now i'm getting that it was was not archonic influence so it's just a natural thing that happens when a creation becomes more and more self-aware it wants to play god because it is and it's completely normal. So you start saying, okay, well, I'm just going to, what happens if I create with a, st a structure of light that's, that, that I think is my own, you know, and I, I ultimately it's all source anyway, but it, it gets a little distorted. And it's not a blame game at all. It's like uh, when you're painting, you step out of the zone for a moment and you recklessly add too much of a color or a misplaced stroke. It is still a creation but maybe not the attention <laughs> that you wanted to maintain. I mean, creation just kind of happens. Fortunately, the masters of light, sound, and form knew how to use geometries to keep the original intent intact while this, this painting <laughs> went awry, uh, just in case it gets so off course that it forgets what it was supposed to be. It's like kind of like taking a photo at some stage in a painting where it's starting to get bad and you're like, well, just so I can remember what my original intention was, just in case it gets so far in another direction, I don't remember what it was like. So these masters of light created these geometries to kind of hold the original intention in place. Now this is why beings like Metatron, uh, whether you want to call him Lord or Archangel or, or whatever, uh, created energetic structures that kept the planet locked in place so she wouldn't be destroyed altogether as these distortions ran their course because in uh, the masters of light in their wisdom saw wow this could really be bad and we have this all these timeline cycles coming to a close and in order for her to do this which means that other galaxies can do that uh, we got to make sure that we don't forget this creation altogether. And a lot of experimentation has been done with the human genome. I am not talking about like in the last 26,000 years playing around with DNA. I'm talking about creating the human genome and the races that contributed to that. And there was a lot of experimentation, a lot of uh, crazy critters and, and, and things going on on the planet. But the original intention of maintaining the human genome on this planet in order to assist this planet to ascend so that other things could happen in the galaxy and eventually other things could happen in the universe that original intention had to be um, protected in a while in a way it's it's a, a way of protecting it so when we get into the geometries of Metatron's cube and, and things like that and a Fibonacci sequence these are all things that that kind of lock certain intentions in place. And as it's just so that distortions don't 
run their course into the ground, we end up destroying the planet again. You know, this is not the first Earth experiment. But as the galactic cycles close, those geometries are no longer needed. And we transcend these protective matrices as we ascend to our original intention as expressions of unconditional love and source light. Because again, human, human DNA contains all the codes of the universe. That's the code for source. And as incredible as that sounds, that is how special you are. And that is why the journey here, especially in these last few thousand years, has been just nuts. It's, this is why. And yes, we're returning to an original structure, but more is happening there too. We're not just going back to um, you know 300,000 years ago. We're evolving with this as well. So this original intention of an expression of unconditional love and source light is what these protective matrices were about maintaining. That's what the skulls are about. That's what all of these these protector type entities and geometries and codes are about. And as we go through the ascension process, they start to get activated. That's why a lot of us suddenly empathic, suddenly have access to galactic information, suddenly in touch with our star families, suddenly feeling in the flow. And at the same time, even if you're experiencing multi-dimensional consciousness, yourself in, in several different places, planets, star systems at the same time, you still have part of yourself here. And this is your, your primary thing right now is this experience and assisting the planet and humanity to make it through the shift is without, without, with the least amount of destruction possible. And so much has been transmuted up and out of here, but it's Gaia's game from here on in. So I'll get to that later. So we're kind of at the new canvas stage where the painting became way too muddy and un unrecognizable to be of any use in evolution. <laughs> so we're starting a fresh one. It's, it's still hard to get some folks to stop painting over the old canvas. Let me just say that. There, but the new canvas emerges anyway, no matter what people keep trying to pile on and, and hide and, and fix, you got to kind of let the old canvas go and that new canvas starts to emerge. And those old colors just simply won't be usable. Okay, enough of the painting metaphors that kind of got off on a tangent there. Okay. Our lessons of unconditional love right here, right now, are largely provided by our planet who is the embodiment of that frequency of unconditional love. And now just as Gaia has learned that unconditional love is not about being a doormat or a martyr or allowing distortions to run their course, so are we. This is why we're here. We are deeply intertwined with this planetary consciousness. She provides a platform for a range of experiences, a place where you may visit in order to learn love. Now, not all planets do this, and Gaia's journey is extraordinary when you compare her to other collective consciousness expressing as a planet. She was an absolute jewel in her higher dimensional state and allowed this dissension on behalf of her own lessons as well as others because again this is not about martyrdom and and look what we've done to the planet you know, she allowed it as much as we did you know she agreed to it as much as we did it has been a deep experience and growth for all of us both planetary and ourselves and uh, it's 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 interesting to think that we all um participated in this and if if that doesn't prove to you by now that your incarnation here is a journey of mastery <laughs> then uh, you, you need to have a session with me and I will explain that because some people are continually looking for proof in the external and they don't see it they don't see that all of the 
challenges, all of the, the waiting scenarios, all of that has been about the lesson. The, it always comes back to love, always comes back to source, always, always, always. And as we have learned here, unconditional love is, is not about letting others impose their will upon yours. Now, the shift out of duality, which is right, wrong, good, bad, love, fear, to triality, where we know discernment, that's good for all, not so good for all, or none my business, is a primary lesson in knowing the self as source. Unconditional is self-love, source love, our expression of source, which is love can't say that enough. This is why learning to love and respect the self, your self, is what most affects the collective consciousness. This is not about telling others what they should be doing. This is about knowing exactly who you are right now. This is the last card in this end game which is playing out. By embodying love, we are embodying source, and that amplifies our capability to create a paradigm of harmony and respect for all expressions of life. This is not about external conditions. At the core of this, giving up the control of others or the planet and its kingdoms, giving all that up, is beautiful, but at the core of your existence, your expression is the same lesson that Gaia has learned, is learning. Part of her consciousness, just like part of your consciousness, is still experiencing this shadow of the last days. But if you're if you're sensitive enough to feel the uh, the ascension, if you're sensitive enough to feel Gaia's ascension, then you know that this is all, uh, this is all a, a game playing out. That doesn't mean that you sit out of the game. It means you play until all these lessons are transmuted so you can go on and, and join, reunite with that higher part of yourself. That is what the ascension process is. It's not about just raising your vibration and being happy all the time. It is about knowing your true self so you can re- merge with that higher part of yourself and join it in a higher dimensional expression on the higher dimensional expression of Gaia. You don't have to ascend to Gaia if you don't want to, of course not. But if you would like to, you know, go to New Earth, and again, I consider New Earth to be a fifth dimensional frequency. If you want to do that, then you, you have to get to know yourself. You have to do the internal stuff. It's the internal state, the unconditional, unwavering love of self in triality, the discernment that must be realized and integrated. It's very easy to send love to the external expressions. We can love everything, but unless we love ourselves without any guilt or worthiness or survival issues based on false beliefs that something outside of us is greater or better or more powerful, we're missing the intention of source, the challenge of what, the challenge of what if I forgot myself? What if I forgot to love myself? When we remember self-love, we remember freedom and joy and creation. And that separation begins to dissolve and we start experiencing that oneness with source. Now, you can leave the planet and go right back to pure consciousness. I mean, the karmic realms are gone. So if you, if you feel that your higher self and your soul have made that choice, then have at it. But in the meantime, let's play, let's, let's play Ascension. Let's play that game. Because it's here for us to raise our vibration a little closer to source light again. <clears throat> now, this also enables us to take advantage of the shift. That window during which um, amazing leaps can be made, just as Gaia is doing with her planetary consciousness. Unconditional love embraces the greater good, the collective, 
evolution. Dissension and stagnation are, are not in the highest interest of all, believe it or not. <laughs> when a planet says enough is enough and decides to ascend, and has a great deal of support because the galactic collective has agreed to clear distortions from its system and nothing can prevent that from occurring. Nothing can prevent that from occurring. The collective will of a higher vibration always trumps the lower vibration. Always. That's why when you begin to ascend your vibration, you immediately affect everybody around you and your town and your country and the planet immediately when you know that self-love and can begin to ascend your vibration without doing the uh, the up and down thing where your DNA is tightly coiled because you're all angry and frustrated and, and feel that you're in limitation and then you start to have a good meditation or the day is going well and you're starting to feel the frequency and your DNA opens up and you feel free. It's wonderful. But that dissension, that tightening up of the DNA where there can be no change, that, that uh, stagnation, that nothing can prevent that from continuing when everything around it begins to open up and ascend frequency. Eventually, the, the tightness, that fear, that doubt, that stagnation begins to crumble, begins to dissolve. Now, it may dissolve right within your own body where you create imbalances because you've got conflict going on. That's why emotional clearing is so important to your physical health during this frequency jump because as the amplification, amplifications come along, you, you've got one half that loves meditation and then you've got the other half that's, you know, in fight and conflict and struggle and et cetera, et cetera. So you've got this yo-yo effect of, you know, DNA going up, going down, going up, you know, coil, uncoil, coil, uncoil. So uh, it's good to <laughs> everybody right now, let's take a breath. <sighs> oh, yeah, okay. Good. <clears throat> DNA open up, thank you. The collective of a higher vibration, <clears throat> excuse me, always trumps the lower vibration. Gaia has been very patient <laughs> integrating her self-love and the frequency jumps very diligently without causing too much of a stir for her inhabitants, largely because there are thousands of light workers and grid workers who are anchoring the new frequency and connecting with her and sending light to the grid. That's when people say they're going to fire the grid. You can fire the grid all day long if you want, but at least three times a day would be nice. But this is why we're not experiencing all the, the gloom and doom of that, that timeline two into dissension. It's because our, the higher frequency is so alive and active on this planet right now that we're raising, it's kind of like pulling everybody else up, you know, reaching out a hand and pulling people out of that, that darker vibration. And the more you, it, it's kind of a, a task for those resonating in a higher vibration to constantly be saying to people who are really stuck in that density, you, you don't have to be there. Come on, it's safe. You know, constantly opening doors, constantly saying, it's okay, jump, we'll catch you. It's fine, come on, come on, let it go, let it go. You gotta get over it. And there's, there's certain alignments in May and June which are gonna speed up that clearing process. And the magnetic changes are a big task to integrate without disturbing the resonance on your surface. So our planetary consciousness, beloved Gaia, is doing a lot of, is doing such an amazing job with balancing the magnetics. And you can see, um, you know, go and look at the real-time magnetosphere um, monitor. And yes, they call it magnetosphere, which I don't understand because <clears throat> you don't call it a magnet. I don't know. Anyway, um, so these certain alignments in May and June are going to speed up the clearing process. 
and she's going to balance as much as she, she can. But we have to realize that these social and governmental and financial changes are, um, <clears throat> they're going to affect us. And these magnetics affect us in very similar ways. We must realize that our journey is very interwoven with hers. It always has been, but it's very apparent right now because frequency change, a shift in frequency means a dimensional shift. And as much as people say there's going to be a pole shift still, um, just because it's happened in the past with this this alignment, um, I still kind of sense it as a polarity shift. And I know that she's got to straighten up and there's all these different things that have to go on. I just don't feel that it's all going to happen all at once. If it does, so be it. It's her choice. But you can't cling to the way that things used to be if you want change. So let's just, you know, surrender a little bit. Uh, you know, let go, let go of the rope <laughs> is fine. And as with all unconditional love, this does not mean that your journey is dominated by Gaia, nor is she dominated by us. We deeply affect each other collectively. And on an individual level, the relationship we have with her will affect our transition through the shift. Now, this is where timelines come in. Those choices that we make and are making each moment affect our transition with Gaia through this, through this, this, uh, I don't want to call it a rocky period because it's beautiful. What, whatever happens, happens. But our journey with her, it depends on how connected you want to be to the planet. And unconditional love is not based on loving the external in order to make it love you back. <laughs> so let's just, let's not walk around with, you know, a, a t-shirt with the, with the planet on it um, and claiming that we love Earth and yet we're not changing the internal behavior of conflict or the internal uh, actions and, and thought forms that we cling to in order to use that, that suffering and darkness as safety and everything around us is wrong, et cetera, et cetera. You just have to make yourself right within and everything else will change. Your perspective will change. And source does not, you know, source does not create things to, to love it, to prove that it's loved. It creates things because it loves itself and wants to know more of itself, all of itself. That seems like ego <laughs> to some people. And it is a higher egoic function, the ego which doesn't operate on fear or survival due to separation from the external. The higher ego supports unconditional love, self as source, oneness, divine, peaceful, creative, joyful, prosperous, abundant, that state of knowing and accepting all of itself, everything. Whatever you want to judge or put labels on, that, that part of me is bad. That part of me shouldn't do that. you you got to get okay with everything that you are right now because we're not, we're not, we're not automatically going to all jump into a, a state of being where we're all, we're all Yeshua. You know, he already existed. We're not recreating that. And though his journey was beautiful, you know, it had a lot of challenges. If you've, if you've read some of the books, <laughs> that was not, <laughs> that was, <clears throat> excuse me, not an easy journey. And him and his wife and his, and his three kids, I'm sure it was a lot better after the whole crucifixion scenario, but wow, that, that was tough, you know, that's really tough. But we're not, we're not all going to walk around like this ideal martyr that is constantly in a state of, of bliss or something because Yeshua's life was not like that. Yes, he was the embodiment, embodiment of that crystalline consciousness, but now that it's us, we get to express it in our own way. And this is, this is something that we, we have to honor within ourselves. We don't have to be like somebody else. You don't have to <clears throat> behave like your guru. Oh, please don't have any. But you don't have to behave like someone else. Just be you. 
And when you see someone else expressing as themselves, try not to judge it too much. Try not to say, well, if they were uh, truly enlightened, they wouldn't do this or they wouldn't do that. And there's so much judgment in, in this, I don't want to call it a movement, but in this ascension process, you got to let it go. Because the, the release of lower density ego is going to, it's going to feel weird for a lot of people that identify with the egoic level as, as safety, as who they are. And when it starts revealing who you truly are, it can, it can be frightening for some people because they haven't confronted that at all. And if you're one of those people that just is, is waiting for, for the, the, the miracle session or the miracle methodology or the modality that, you know, suddenly, you know, bazing, zap, okay, you're, you're hundred percent crystal go. <laughs> um, it, it, that might happen, but it probably will not be in the physical. I'm, I'm just saying if you're here and you want to experience the ascension process for all that it is, um, you can't just wait for it. You know, that's, that's kind of depending on the external to show you what's internal. And it's, you know, it's, it's doing that through the mirror method already. So, you know, stop avoiding the mirror. That's my, that's my two cents right there. Now we're getting some help with the ego this week. The 555 marker, that's May 5th, 2012, 2 plus 1 plus 2, 5, okay. Relieves the denser egoic constructs. Is the ego going away? Of course not. It's transforming into something else. Is it going to instantly pop off the planet? No, it never does. <laughs> and I, I truly wish that people would not think that markers mean everybody all at once in the same way. Here it is, magical pop, New Earth. We would all implode. It, it would just burst your particles into a million directions if the fifth dimensional frequency was instantly manifested on this planet. So try not to hope for that too much. Now, the, this whole egoic release, though, sounds unpleasant, and it will be for many. But if you find yourself off balance this month, at least you'll know why. It's like if you, if you stand on a platform with legs of mind, ego, and emotions for a long time, all these incarnations, and one of those legs is suddenly yanked out, you have to kind of rebalance pretty quickly. I mean, you might fall, you might teeter a little bit, but the best advice I can give is to learn self-love that is your freedom from all of these false structures. As these structures crumble beneath us, it's foolish to try and rebuild something that doesn't work anymore. And clinging to those structures as they fall apart is also unwise. Probably going to get hurt. As is with watching them fall apart. You don't want to just stand and stare at the destruction. Get on with it. And learn who you truly are. Learn what you're really about. And that's not about the endless search for mission. That is coming. I don't know if you have any trust in me whatsoever, but trust me. The new mission is unfolding and it's for a lot of people it's going to look like assistance and facilitation which is going to surprise some people because um, again with this release of of the the denser harder tighter structures of ego that have put people in i feel like i'm really meant to do something huge thousands of people are going to listen to me well, that's you stepping up into your, your creator abilities. And it's <laughs> it, it doesn't always manifest in you being some kind of a, a preacher, guru, teacher, leader, etc. It may be extremely subtle. Let's remember that the frequencies of photonic light, that beautiful Lemurian, Pleiadian, fifth dimensional energy that we experience is very fine. It's so subtle. And I know that we're all trained for, you know, hyper 
super mega blast flavors and media and, and showmanship and all this huge stuff. And, and our sensitivities have just been destroyed by all of this constant uh, pressure and information and the external. But when you start to tap into the internal and getting to know who you truly are, that <clears throat> silence and presence of your higher self will feel that subtle, fine light that is photonic, that is expanding in between the cells where the crystalline structure is, starts to expand yourself outward. And just like I described in that show on multidimensional consciousness, it's not you flying away or lifting away to somewhere else. It's an expansion from right in the core, right at the heart center out. It's an expansion. It's beautiful, beautiful frequency. But again, it's very subtle. So if you're feeling off balance or don't know what's going on, get quiet, get silent with it, and stop looking to the external to fix it, balance it, change it. You've got to do the, the work within. And I know nobody wants to do it. I know. Very lazy human consciousness sometimes. <laughs> but uh, but we're coming out of that. And And yes, you have to take care of yourself. And yes, there's a lot of rest involved. But let's not just rest and then get up and worry and feel awful the rest of the day. Let's start integrating that new vibration that's coming in. Now observe what occurs in your life stream during this time, and especially during May, because we've got some interesting things coming up. We've got, uh, you know, the 555, and then we've got a few days of, of high-intensity synchronicity, and then we've got the solar eclipse happening right over Shasta, where I'm going to be in a week. Um, it's These are major events, and not only are they... And again, this isn't the whole planet's going to be transformed because a thousand light workers are in Shasta celebrating the eclipse. Uh uh, it doesn't work that way. We are anchoring frequencies in order for the planet to balance. It's constant balance, it's constant receiving the higher frequency, accepting it, anchoring it, integrating it, and then you amplify. You can't just take a frequency and immediately amplify it unless you are. An ascended master, honestly. It's it receiving that frequency. Yes, you can be a conduit, immediate conduit for any kind of frequency coming in, but when it comes to integrating it into your ascension process, I'll, you know, a lot of people have felt that. You receive the really high frequency, like on 1111, or, or whenever you felt that frequency, um, or before 1111. You feel that new thing come in, you're like, Oh, you know, this complete state of expansion. And then as many a light worker way shower knows, a day later, a couple days later, I mean, first you're you're wiped out the next day or you're kind of in a kind of strange um, state of suspended animation. And then everything starts to crumble. And you're like, oh my God, what did I do? I, I'm, I'm, I lost it, you know, and everyone's like, oh my God, I lost it. I felt so good a couple of days ago. Well, this is integration. Realize that other things have crumbled because there is no room for them anymore. There is no room for that lower frequency always falls away. And that's not judgment on, oh, that, that friend left or that relationship ended or I lost this or that because it was wrong. You're just making a choice. Your higher self is making a choice. And if you can make it conscious, say, yep, give me as much as I can take. And if you know how to intentionally command the body vehicle to integrate and command all levels, all layers, all dimensions of you to integrate, amplify, expand, accelerate. Okay, this is, this is how we work with this. This is how we and remember to consciously do that as this new stuff comes in. Realize that a release of, of denser levels on the planet doesn't mean them. It means us. It means you, all of us. This isn't they're going to 
<laughs> get get what's coming to him. We have to, as I wrote in the May Post this week, we have to step out of the. It's not just blame game, but the payback scenario. Get over it. Get over it. Clemency is happening everywhere, left and right. People who worked for the dark for thousands and thousands of years are stepping into the light and realizing who they truly are and setting up things to assist with the transition. And a lot of people want revenge. They want blood. What is that about? That's doing the same thing that they were doing. <laughs> what are you doing? Step out of it. Get over it. You know, you're just going to have to get over a lot of the the revenge and the payback because they have, you know, these these dark agendas have trained you to be in a very dualistic way when it comes to somebody does something wrong, they must be punished. You know what? Enough. If somebody does something wrong and they come and they say, okay, I, I what did I use on my website? I use the, the idea of a bully, you know, a 10 year old bully cornered by all the people that he's ever picked on and he's breaking down, you know, tears are running down his face, but he's got his fists up and he's still trying to be the boss and he's still trying to dominate and he's still trying to, to crush everybody else. But all these people are getting closer and surrounding him with forgiveness and love and saying, it's okay. It's all right. Now you stole all, all our lunch money. So, uh, ice cream's on you, but we're, let's go play Ascension. You know, let's get with, let's get with the program. It's over. Nobody cares what you did before because right now in the present moment, you're assisting. And right now in the present moment is all that matters. We're going to leave all the deception and the manipulation and the control behind because otherwise you're just continuing that same dynamic of go get them. Enough. Enough of that. We, we have to just get over it because a lot of things are changing rapidly and when we talk about releasing the the egoic density a lot of people automatically think oh good they're gonna finally feel it as if it's something outside of oneness that's going on it's all of us it's Gaia if you think that Gaia has just been a, a complete angel about everything that she's ever experienced you got to get over that too you know, she is connected to the consciousness that has incarnated on her for billions of years. There is no way that she could have ever not experienced uh, judgment, duality, pain, revenge. I mean, she's got all of that, too. It just depends on what you act on right now. Except that you have that within you, but you've got to say, oh, wow. I've got that within me. I really wanted to push back when that person did something. I really wanted to go get them. What is that? That's not even me. Okay, be gone. Bind it to the sun. Get it out of here. And if you don't know how to do that, have a session with me. Get, you know, get that stuff up and out of you. Or at least accept it. If you're like, you know what? Nope, I'm not willing. I'm not ready to let go of it. Now, I'll, I'll clear everything around it, but I'm not ready to let go of of dues must be paid, etc. But at least be at peace with it and not, you know, ranting on on your social media or to your friends or, or whatever, about how you want people to to be taken down. It's not what this is about. This is about dissolving things with higher frequency. Let them play the game. Let the let the bully be the bully. Invite them to come and play Ascension when you come face to face with them. No need to talk about them behind their back. If you want to complain about, you know, a senator, I do it right to his face <laughs> or to his email at least. But this is, you know, this is about being in your true self. What are you experiencing? Every once in a while say, why? Why is it being so hard? And I can't figure it out. And ask for help. There are so many people, you know, if you can't swing 
the the 99 bucks for 90 minutes with me that's fine there are plenty of people who you can talk to talk to a friend talk to if you have a a, a counselor friend even even better There's somebody who can sort through these things but ask for help because you don't have to do this alone oneness does not mean <laughs> separation and figuring it out all by yourself. There are plenty of people who can help. There's plenty of information out there on the internet too that can assist you with this process of getting back to self-love. And I, I believe that that is going to be a big focus of, of my change in mission because my mission is changing this month. Um, I'm relocating to Mount Shasta at least through the end of June to be there for some specific events that are are connected to that Pleiadian aspect of myself. Whether you resonate with, with star families or not, um, that's fine. Uh, Mount Shasta is one of the two largest vortexes um, in the U.S. And me, uh, Metatron talks about Arkansas vortex opening up too. And if you've ever been through the Ozarks, um, you can you can feel that too. Um, I, I personally don't feel um, comfortable being uh, at that, that kind of epicenter that Metatron has been talking about for a while. And I considered it, but um, Shasta is, is calling right now. So I'm going to go and uh, hang out with the Andromedans <laughs> and, the, and the Pleiadians and the Lemurians and everybody else and, and see what's going on because everything is going to be changing and we all sense that especially if you're a light worker way shower we've known for months like oh do i really have to keep writing posts do i really have to keep talking about what's going to happen how long are people going to need this you're like oh I'm, I'm like totally jumping ahead on the timeline and and you know my mission is is getting um a, a big change and it's uh, it, it's very interesting. Huge leap of trust and faith to make the cross country drive, uh, um, which I'm not looking forward to. So if you live along Route 80 <laughs> between New York and California, um, write me on my website because I would love a place to stay where you could just you know talk and talk ascension and and be cool and uh, connect with with some people who are who are also on this journey. Um, and I welcome that. Absolutely. Thank you. But as our missions change and as these things get a little tumultuous, perhaps, this month and next month especially, um, make sure that you are taking the time to love the journey and to love yourself. And I hope that's been a, a nice, tidy way of talking about unconditional love. There is a lot more uh, information on my website, which I welcome you to explore anytime. And let's just make, make the moments to surrender to the greater good and embrace it with your true self. The self-love of source, which permeates all of creation as it starts to remember itself. It's a beautiful process. I thank you very much for listening to me. If you need any more information, please visit my website. It's on the, the tag at the end of the show. And have a beautiful and creative week. This has been Ascension Integration with Sandra Walter. For more information on Ascension or Ascension Counseling, visit Sandra on the web at www.sandrawalter.com. Thank you.